My apologies to the government house leader. It is now time for members' statement. I recognize the member from Niagara. Well, thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Read my lips. No new taxes. That's right, our government is getting it done for the people of Ontario by investing in housing infrastructure, highways, transit, and health care without raising costs on families, businesses, and municipalities. Yesterday, our government tabled the 2024 budget, Building a Better Ontario. And, Speaker, our government is getting it done for the people of Ontario and Niagara. Now, like the rest of the world, Ontario faces uncertain economic uh, times due to high interest rates and global instability. But in this time, we're continuing to press forward and ensuring that we're getting the job done for the families in my riding and the rest of this province. Despite the challenges facing us, Ontario is continuing to deliver on its plan to build by investing in infrastructure, to get more homes built faster, attracting better jobs with bigger paychecks, all while keeping costs down for families and businesses and retaining a prudent path to balance. For Niagara, building a stronger Ontario means extending the gas cuts for families, expanding go rail service to our region, increasing service levels, twinning the Garden City Skyway over the Welland Canal in St. Catharines, supporting the redevelopment of the West Lincoln Memorial Hospital to completion, adding more primary care for 11,000 Ontario Niagarans, supporting the new South Niagara Hospital to completion, and supporting local grape and winemakers by cutting the 6.1 on site farm tax, strengthening local economic development. Speaker, as the Minister of Finance said yesterday, our only option in, in these uncertain economic times is to move ahead, and we're going to continue to get things done for the people of Ontario and all of Niagara. Member statement. I recognize the member from Timmison Cochrane. Thank you, Speaker. In early March, uh, Englard Hospital had to close their ER for a couple days due to a physician shortage, and like many rural hospitals, um, are also facing ballooning budget problems because of um, agency health care staff, agency nurses. So we were very interested in looking at the budget yesterday, what that was going to do for rural hospitals, and there was a base, a, an increase in base funding to hospitals. That's a good thing, but the base funding increase was less than inflation. So actually, that was a cut. It was less than, in, less than inflation, and it didn't do anything to address one of the biggest issues in hospitals it's paying for agency nurses agency PSWs it's it's a huge issue and it's an issue that this government seems to want to ignore or actually almost seems to want to perpetuate when we see in our hospitals the biggest budget item is agency nursing and we know that the cost is massively inflated by the profit margins of the agencies. And it's an issue that has to be addressed. Is there a role? Do we need agencies in some cases? In some cases, yes, but not at the extent of what's happening now. This government has missed the mark on this, and we don't know why, but we, they need to act now. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Member statements. The member for Newmarket, Aurora. Thank you, Speaker. Last Thursday, I had the privilege of hosting a community safety discussion at the Aurora Town Hall with the York Regional Police in response to recent incidents of auto thefts and break-ins in our community. We organized a town hall to provide our residents with updates on local safety initiatives led by the York Regional Police Services. With the rise in crime over the last few years, as a provincial government, we have committed to fighting this crime by investing millions of dollars to combat various forms of crime, from auto thefts to enhancing court resources to prosecute criminals to standardizing investigative practices, particularly for hate crimes, as well as addressing guns and gang 
killings and a violence reduction strategy. The message was clear from the residents in attendance. An increased police presence and greater CCTV monitoring, as well as stricter bail reform to ensure perpetrators who are committing multiple crimes over and over will be kept in prison. A heartfelt thank you to York Regional Police as they are on the front lines to support our community, to protect us and keep us safe. Thank you to all of the village vigilant residents whose partnership and proactive stands when it comes to help safety drives our communities forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Niagara Centre. Thank you, Speaker. Kathy Carries of Port Coburn is grieving the loss of her beloved husband, Ernie Carries, who died on Monday, October 16, 2023, at the age of 67. Her journey on the loss of her husband of 20 years is deeply personal and emotional. Ernie was a healthy, intelligent husband, father, and grandfather, very active in his family's lives, and they continue to struggle with this overwhelming loss. Kathy, a registered nurse for over 35 years, knew a delayed cancer diagnosis would lead to serious consequences or death, and that's what happened. Classic symptoms were either heart failure or cancer, and his heart was fine. But Ernie couldn't get an oncology appointment until he had a cancer diagnosis. That dragged on for months with several painful biopsies. One of those biopsies was sent to British Columbia when there was a clinic in Toronto that could have done it. Kathy said she witnessed so much wasted money and resources as she continued to advocate for her husband. The process was exhausting. It is stressful for Kathy to watch her husband suffering this whole time and the ongoing hardships in getting the proper treatment for him. As she grieves, she wants other families to know what happened to Ernie. She says there is a lack of coordinated care in our region and across the province, which contributes to high costs and poor, inconsistent care across different facilities. There's a direct correlation, Speaker, between the decisions this government makes in budget and the way the health care system works. Right now, it is in crisis. I will continue to advocate for people like Kathy and her family as they are impacted by doctor shortages, underfunding, lack of staffing, and hospital plans that are shrinking our health care services in EMS, urgent care, and emergency surgical care at a time when our population in Niagara is growing. We must do better, Speaker. Member Statements, the member for Kitchener-Conestoga. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and uh, you'll be delighted to hear that this year, on April 6th, is the 60th anniversary of the Elmira Maple Syrup Festival. Friends, this is the largest single-day maple syrup festival in the world. It holds a Guinness World Record, and this year we're expecting roughly 80,000 people in a city that's built for about 15,000, so you can imagine how busy it's going to be. Um, but this year is going to be a little bit different. Um, in late December this year, we lost a champion of the Elmira Maple Syrup Festival. Doug McLean passed away. He served on the festival committee for over 35 years, uh, twice as chair, and also ran the toy show for many years. So, Doug, on the 60th anniversary, this one's for you, my friend. All the best to your family, and can't wait to be in Elmira on the 6th. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. The member for Thunder Bay Superior North. Speaker, my former artistic home, the Thunder Bay Symphony Orchestra, continues to bring world-class performances and music education programs to communities throughout a very large region. The three orchestra concerts I attended this month alone were not only huge artistic successes, they were full houses, and they are always full houses for the collaborations between Indigenous artists and the TBSO. Everything that is under the control of the organization is on solid ground, but unfortunately, not even full houses can make up for years of funding cuts. Yesterday, I was shocked. There was no mention in the budget of restoring funding to the Ontario Arts Council. In fact, apart from some supports for film production, there was no mention of the arts at all. This is short-sighted. The TBSO is the epicentre of a unique industry in our community that diversifies the economic landscape. In recruitment materials for professionals and workers in all categories, the orchestra is a key selling point for the city of Thunder Bay. And I know that the centrality of arts organizations to community life is true throughout the entire province. Artists in all disciplines 
are the lifeblood of our communities, and it is long overdue that the government recognizes this and restores funding to the organization that supports it all, the Ontario Arts Council. Thank you. Miigwech. Merci. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Markham, Thornhill. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. The housing crisis is a primary cause of the affordability crisis in this province. That is why last week the Premier announced that Ontario will be investing over $1.8 billion in housing enabling infrastructure in order to help build 1.5 million homes by 2031. That investment is part of the commitment our government has made to help build more affordable homes across the Ontario. So, Speaker, the new $1 billion Municipal Housing Infrastructure Program will help support core urban infrastructure that growing and changing communities need, such as roadways or water work. This funding support our existing $1.2 billion building faster fund to help reward communities that meet our exceed their housing target. Our government is investing to build homes that Ontarians can afford and looking at new methods of housing, such as modular homes. Mr. Speaker, the York Region and my city of Markham is looking forward to working with our government in order to get more shovel into the ground that will help build more housing, especially affordable housing. I would like to thank the Minister for Municipal Affairs and Housing and the Associate Minister and the PA for their hard work to help create more housing supply. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements, the member for Kingston and the Islands. Thank you, Speaker. I rise today to honour an outstanding citizen of Kingston, Mr. Jamshed Hassan, affectionately known as Jimmy. From Pakistan to California to Toronto to Kingston, 21 years ago, Jimmy fearlessly worked his way to where he is now. He opened a Pizza Pizza franchise where he, when he got to Kingston, a store he still owns and where he still sweeps the floors today. Jimmy treasures the diversity of Canada, and he founded the Canadian Colors Kingston Foundation seven years ago to promote just that by gathering different parts of our community together. Through his business, he has donated to local charities every year and used his contacts to organize drives to collect blankets and food for the homeless. He's the producer and host of his own cable TV show, Community Voices, about local and political, social and political issues, and in 2022 was elected to Kingston City Council. You'll find Jimmy at community events, at the mosque, in his store, in council chambers, at political events, or maybe he's away visiting his family in Pakistan. He's a husband, father to three boys, successful businessman, community leader, and most of all, proud to be Canadian. Sometimes it takes an immigrant to remind all of us what Canadian citizenship really means. It's an honour to call you a friend, Jimmy. Thank you very much. <clears throat> the next member's statement, the member for Mississauga Centre. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Yesterday's budget, Building a Better Ontario, was a very exciting day for our Ontario families, residents, seniors, and workers, including those in the healthcare sector. When we got elected six years ago, we made a commitment to ending hallway healthcare, investing into infrastructure, growing our healthcare workforce, and supporting those on the road to recovery in their mental health journey. In contrast, the previous Liberal government wreaked havoc on our health care system by freezing hospital budgets and their inability to sit at the table with our doctors. Speaker, yesterday's budget had many wins for health care, such as increase for behavioral supports, $2 billion more for home care, and 3,000 more nursing student spots at our colleges and universities. We understand that more seniors want to grow old in their home, beside loved ones, and not in a hospital hallway. And this is true for seniors living with dementia. Yesterday, we announced an investment of $46 million to support the continued operation of 59 existing behavioral specialized units and to add more than 200 new BSU units. We are also investing $2 billion into home care, bringing stability to the sector and helping people manage chronic conditions like dementia at home for longer. Speaker, our frontline heroes have always been there for us, 
and we will continue to have their back. Thank you. Thank you. The next member statement, the member for Eglinton Lawrence. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Last Saturday evening, I attended a local Purim celebration at Temple Sinai in my riding. During Purim, Jews commemorate escaping from tyranny with the help of Queen Esther. Although Purim is normally joyous, this year it is clouded by uncertainty as over 130 hostages are still being held by Hamas terrorists over 170 days after October 7. Temple Sinai also commemorated the life of Judy Weinstein, a member of its congregation murdered by Hamas, whose body has not been returned to Israel or her family. Those present listened to a haiku recorded by Judy, which ended with the sentiment, now more than ever, kindness and tolerance with an open heart. On Sunday, I attended a rally at Queen's Park organized by Canadian Women Against Anti-Semitism (CWAA). On public land, the crowd sang along with gospel singers to Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah and listened to women describe their experiences with anti-Semitism. People held up signs reading, Love thy neighbour, and waved the Canadian flag, and Judy Weinstein's haiku was shared again. At the same time as the CWAA event occurred, a Shut It Down for Palestine demonstration occurred. The objective, as the name implies, was to shut down the activities of others, including by blocking intersections and waving signs saying, by any means necessary. Instead of persuasion, that strategy relies on power and intimidation. Power and intimidation are not democratic tools, and we cannot and will not be intimidated. This is our Queen Esther moment, and we must fight back against anti-Semitism and all attempts to impose tyranny. Thank you. Thank you very much.